Today's episode is brought to you by Gray Block Pizza. And Gray Block Pizza, if you want that, you want that beautiful taste. You want that something, you want something to hit your lips and get inside of your lips, in your face, uh, and you want it to be pizza, they got you. 1811 Pico Boulevard on the way to the beach in Los Angeles. Gray Block, get that hitter. Today's guest I've been a fan of for a long time. Uh, he won an NBA championship in his rookie year with the Boston Celtics. Uh, he played in a Final Four with uh, LSU Tigers, and um, and he's as entertaining as they come. He's one half of the hostship of the new podcast, The Rabbit and the Bear. It is Mr. Glenn Big Baby Davis. Must have started starving when you left Louisiana, did you? <laughs> did I? The food is just not the same. Yeah, like you know what I mean. I feel like where we're from is just like they put love into it. Yeah, there's it something else in so there. So good, like half you know? a Winston in there, you might find. Dude, <laughs> yeah. I would love it, man. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'm, it's been different, you know, away from Louisiana. Yeah. yeah. Do you get back home a lot, or what's your vibe like going I, back? I try to go back as much as I can, but there's just nothing there. Like I can't like. I got to drive to New Orleans, you know, Baton Rouge is the capital. So it's like, you know, it needs, to, you know, LSU f- football, you know, that's probably the, you know, most craziest thing I feel like, you know, that's there. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I try to go back as much as I can. Yeah. Get that good food. Does, um, were you, how, did you follow the, uh, the last football season pretty heavily? Were you invested or? Are you fucking kidding me? I didn't me? know, man. I don't know <laughs> what you're you into. Are you I thought me? you might be a Grambling fan, man. man, man I didn't know, bro. <laughs> no, I'll be a Southern University for a Grambling. But I hell know. yeah. I thought you might like Jackson State. You never know who people <laughs> are going to like over there, nah, man. Nah, man. I am a full-blown LSU Tiger. Yeah. Um, Joe Barrow is my fucking guy. That's crazy, <laughs> huh? Cra- yeah, he's a great guy. I love what he did this year and just what that whole squad did. Yeah. You know, that was just unbelievable. When you look back at like uh when you look back at playing like in college and stuff was and you compare it to playing in the pros, like how does it different for difference for a, a player? Like is it did one does one seem more magical than the other? Does one seem more fun? Well, you know what? Uh, it's a big difference. You know what I'm saying? Cuz really college was fun. And at the same time, magical. Like, what we did in the NCAA tournament was, like, magical. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? We wasn't supposed to be Duke. We wasn't supposed to be Texas. And then we go to the Final Four. You know, when you get to the NBA, it's more like business. Right. You know what I mean? You win a championship. It's more like you see the business of the game. And, you know, you understand kind of now the process. It's definitely different from college, for sure, for sure. Do you you feel like – do you feel – do you feel – because I know a lot of times like now they talk more about and um, uh, they talk more about like players potentially getting paid and stuff as college athletes or having money set aside for them. Did you did you ever feel like more used as a player or did you not think about it or did you, you feel more used in the NBA? Did you have? Well, it, it, in the NBA, you know, you, you get paid. Right. There's money. That, yeah, because money gets involved in the NBA. So then there's a different – there's a yeah. business aspect First, where in college it's not really there, but there's yeah. money being made. But There's money being made. And, you know, it, 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 it made me kind of realize when the Final Four was going on, I walked in Walmart and I seen a number zero and it says, go baby. Mm. You know what I mean? And now I'm looking like, what the fuck? What yeah, what is this for a newborn? I know this shit ain't like, for a newborn. That's me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know that's me. Yeah, so yeah. like, I felt some type of way, but at the same time, like LSU is a nice school and they they give a lot. So I never really had to worry about anything. Right. So yeah, so that kind of stuff it didn't affect. So in college, I guess you didn't think about it as much. I didn't think about it at all. And when you get to the pros, like money gets involved. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, it's crazy. First and fifteenth checks is crazy, and isn't it like for me? I find even just like doing podcasts and like it, it starts out fun and then it starts to become like a little bit of like a business, you know. Uh, sometimes, so I have to manage like my brain is like, okay, am I thinking like business right now, or am I just trying to think of, you know, I'm just having a good time, you know? Yeah, it's a well, you know what? I've, I've, 
just the best of both worlds, right? You get to joke and, you know, be funny and, and have great conversations on the podcast and get paid for it. Yeah. So it's like, it's a good blend, but at the same time, you know, it's a job too. So yeah. I totally understand. Yeah, it's a job. It's a, I'm trying to think, I guess sometimes it's like, my tough thing is like trying not like, sometimes I can't tell if I should put, try and put on a mood, like a, you know, like, yeah. or if I should just you know, or if I should, or try to just be myself, you know, and it starts uh, to get blurred over a while, uh-huh, uh-huh. you know, um, and you have a podcast that you're starting up, right? Yes. Nice. Tell me about uh, that. It's called The Rabbit and the Bear. Okay. okay. And okay. I'm, I'm, I'm my co-host. Okay. It's here today. Shout out. Yep. Riley Rabbit. Riley Rabbit is here. Thank a you. A beautiful young lady mm-hmm. uh, in the adult industry and just her aspect of life and athletes, you know, a part of life yeah. and that's what we try to base it on and, 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 and kind of get our viewers to kind of understand just another take of you know these two people you know on this side of the world you know so it's like it, it's a it's a great I'm, I'm excited about it it's just know? gonna be you guys having a good time yeah, yeah. We're gonna be, but we're gonna be talking about a lot of stuff though yeah you know trying to humanize you know the the, the adult industry yeah and um and then also try to bring sports you know, in the same package, right? You know, kind of that Vegas feel. You know what I mean? Yeah, because Vegas is really—it's probably, I guess, a crossing grounds. I guess I wonder if, especially during that summer league, is over there. Did you ever play in summer league or no? I did. You did. I did, and it's 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 crazy. Yeah, you know, a lot of people come out there. You think about Vegas, everybody in the world stops there. Yeah. So it's just oh, like yeah. you know, and everybody what I mean? stops there to act up. Yeah, and so we want to get that. We want you to come in for an hour, come in for 40, 50 minutes, and kind of tell us what's going on with your life and your oh, experience. I like that. Yeah, us, you'll have guests and stuff. Oh, for sure. Yeah, for sure. We got to have you on there. When yeah, I would come in when I go there. <laughs> I'm trying to stay. I try to stay out of trouble, but I, I I struggle with. I try to stay off of adult industry. I've been. I've seen a lot of y'all's work, but I'm trying not to watch anymore, man. I'm tired of jerking off. And I'm serious, man. It hurts my own feelings after a while, bro. I'm serious. Clam, my feelings get hurt, man. But, I mean, I love y'all's work and everything. I'm not saying that. I respect the art and everything, but, oh, man, yeah. So, I guess, I mean, it'll be interesting. I'll definitely stop by. I might have to wear a blindfold, but I will. <laughs> I'll stop by. You know what? You know, I'm kind of kind of immune to it. You know, yeah. just you know, just seeing it, it's like, oh, that's a that's a fat ass right there. Yeah, and just keep on going with my day. Yeah, like. right, right. <laughs> well, that's a good attitude to have, man. I yeah, I think I, I probably I I tend to visually I tend to mill around a fat ass, you know, and stuff. My thing is, I just have to stay off the internet. That's what keeps the internet's me in trouble. killing you. <laughs> yeah, it's just too much, man. I can't handle just the graphic, just the it's too high definition, man. I miss that kind of blurry tit, you know? When I was young, it was different. You, know? you can't see the nipple. Yeah, you couldn't, man. You don't know. It What's could be up? a strong dude. You don't even know sometimes. What's up? You know, it's more mysterious. Oh, yeah. How hard is it, like, um, how hard was it once you started making money to kind of fend off like because with money comes you know the dark arts come around uh, you know? they, they come and it's easy especially now with like um social media it's easy for like a you know opportunity to you know to just slide into your dms to slide into your life you know you know, you know what you um uh, it's tough i can, imagine, I can it's imagine it's tough. really tough it's it's really really tough in ways but um i don't know i think it's how you grow up and you know what you want for yourself you know what i mean like did you ever, did you struggle, did you ever struggle with like once you got, go, like, cause I could have, like I've I've started to make some money in my life. I've never mm-hmm. made large chunks of money like you guys. I couldn't even imagine giving that mm-hmm. much money to a, a person at that time, you know? <laughs> but it seems, it, I mean, congratulations, it just seems intense. It is, it is, especially if you don't know what to do with it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, it was a point where, you know, I had to figure out okay, uh, where do I put this at? Or where do I get this? Or how do I make sure that I have money down the, the road? Like, yeah. You know what I mean? I had to kind of put that together. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, and I had to lose some money before yeah. I got that done. You oh, know I'm sure. I mean? yeah, yeah. I had to like, okay, I want to go do this. Oh, shit. I, the, damn. That was, what was it? Was there something crazy you invested in? You invested in something wild? Any ostrich farms or something out no, there? No, not ostrich farms. I just, I think flying pj is the worst thing you can do flying private yeah, yeah. like you just spend so much I, I used to fly pj just to fly like i'm so fucking cool like yeah i want to get on a plane it's 40 grand 
Yeah. <laughs> and then you look like, oh, do that 12 times. <laughs> it's like, that's big, big bread you're spending. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, you got to figure your way out. You know, uh, you got to understand your money and um, and what you can do with it, how you can, you know, make it grow and put it in situations to, to you know, make you better financially. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I could imagine. I, yeah, I just couldn't. That's such a wild thing for a young man to get, especially in that age. You're 19, 20, 22 years old to get a large sum of money is risky. And then we're from Louisiana, man. Yeah. We don't got shit. Like, we, it's you hard. Want, yeah. It's, you want to turn everything into a parade, yeah, you know? I want everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Let me get that. Let me get that. I, I ain't never had that. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, you know. I want you a just... stripper with speakers on the back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> My, Dude, you tell a stripper to just carry a 22 with her. You're like, Man. What is even going on? Yeah, just for sure. Walking with a rim out on the stage. You know? <laughs> I see some wild shit. I see some wild. I think the when I first saw a million dollars, I was so obsessed with it. I went and grabbed a million dollars out of my account and literally just put it on the bed and just rolled around. Did in you it. really? And I had some adult. We just Friend, had some yeah. fun. Damn. Like it was like it was the first million I ever had, and I wanted to be around girls, and I wanted to just have like a big orgy or something yeah. like you know oh, what i mean yeah. like some movie type shit you know so i got some real good stories for and that's how coronavirus <laughs> got started probably but i'm guessing bro that's what i'm saying because i'm sure that money went back in the corona system. was definitely in the house that night <laughs> corona. dang man yeah. does, does that kind of is it hard to like kind of curtail that kind of behavior because i mm -hmm. like i get it like i get addicted i know for myself like i get addicted to like if i start watching pornography i get into watching it you know or that or sexual stuff you know yeah. is it hard to like um is it hard to kind of is it hard to not let that did, did that kind of stuff ever affect your uh your your basketball life or did it ever yeah there was a point in time when you know, I would say have to be when I was with the Clippers. I had just moved to L.A. And it was like my first time like being in L.A. with a lot oh. of money. So I was oh. just like every night I was just like if we didn't have practice the next day, I was definitely in somebody's red carpet party or I'm somewhere at Crazy Girls Strip Club or something. Just living it back, up. Just, just having a good time. So, yeah. you know, you kind of. You kind of got to go through it in order to say, you know what, I don't really don't want to do this anymore. No right. You know what I mean? That's my advice to a, another athlete. Like, you know, you got to see it first. You got to experience, know what it feels like, and then you're like, okay, I'm all about the greater good. So let me kind of shorten this up and let me figure it out and right. do the right thing. Yeah, growing up. It just Some of it's growing up, I guess, huh, you think? Yeah, you got to grow up. Especially for where we're from, we ain't never seen nothing. I know. Like, I ain't never seen nothing. So it's like, oh. Yeah, Baton Rouge, they didn't even have, they had some shit. All, everything looked like they had done it maybe and made it in the 70s. Man, shit. what? Like, I'd be so shocked when I go downtown Baton Rouge now because there's so <laughs> much shit. I'm like, this used to be, like, <laughs> empty. Like, Yeah, they nothing. have some nice hotels and stuff now. Yeah, they got some pretty good nice hotels. Did you, um... Yeah, I could. Just, I just try to think about what that's like. Like, man, if I got, if I was, if I was uh, good at something like a sport, <laughs> I would not even want to be playing the game. A lot of time, I feel like this game is. Let's get done with the game so I can go have fun. You know. <laughs> well, you gotta get that check. You know. That's right. You gotta play. You gotta get that check. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, first and fifteen. You know, sometimes a game you can make. Twelve thousand dollars for one game, so it's like <laughs> you got to be there. Got to be there. So yeah. that 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 was the easy part going to the game. Yeah. <laughs> um. Did you ever? Did you ever play with any players that smoked cigarettes that still played? Uh. <laughs> well. I. I uh, no. Only person to be close to smoking a cigarette is probably Paul Pierce. He's you know he likes to drink so. Oh yeah, he likes that fun. A little cig while he <laughs> waits. Yeah, cigar. Or something. He, he looks like yeah, yeah. I can see that maybe. Yeah. Does he wear that headband in the club or not? No. Okay. Okay. <laughs> no. I could see him with it. You know what? You know he is definitely worst dress ever of <laughs> Celtics. So you know he probably would wear a fucking headband into like <laughs> the club. <laughs> Does he have a pretty good sense of humor? Kind of, sort of. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah. Yeah. He's. Cali boy, so you know they're kind of like cool yeah. and shit. Yeah, so. yeah, 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 yeah. And what about Blake Griffin though? <sighs> He's really funny. His like he has a com like a comedian like feel every time he says something. Yeah, you know. So he's kind of funny, but 
Yeah, that's the only other NBA guy that I know is Blake Griffin. Yeah, that's the same thing I find about him. Sometimes I can, I'm surprised sometimes when he's funny because I, I don't at, at first think he's gonna be, and then I'm yeah. like, oh, he's joking. Yeah, he, he kind of gets what's going on. Yeah, he has that humor. You yeah, know? he was he was always like a a comedic like relief <laughs> during hard times with the. With we the Clippers. We got this question that came in right here from a gentleman right here, this little white guy. A white guy? Which other NBA player did you fight with the most, or who do you dislike the most? And I'll even uh, rephrase it. Was there a guy in, uh, uh, whenever you played uh, in the NBA that you had like yes. a arch nemesis? Yes. I couldn't stand Chris Humphreys. Chris Humphreys from he Golden was, State. He, he was no, no. He was Kim Kardashian's boyfriend. Oh yeah, the the big. He looked like a model, man. I, he just was like, yeah, like yeah. <laughs> I blocked your shot. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yeah, big baby. <laughs> you like that? Like, <laughs> and I'm just like, bro, like, why you gotta be so like proper and like, like, goddamn, like. It made me sick, like to my oh, damn, fucking damn. like every time. Like, ha, 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 yeah, you, you almost had that. Huh? Like I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? Who, who talks trash like that? He sounds like that count from Sesame Street. Yeah, you know? like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> big baby. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like you know, I just I couldn't stand him. I just really couldn't like at all. That's hilarious. Huh? Yeah, but I, he's Kim Kardashian. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. She definitely. She really went through it. Look at uh, him. Like some man. Now he does have he, yeah. He seems a little bit like more a, like a uh, model man. Yeah, like preppy kid. He went to the prep school and he's the jock. Oh and yeah, he, all the girls love him. Oh, what about that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you like that? Oh, time out, huh? <laughs> all right. I'm gonna check my stocks. <laughs> yes, definitely, definitely, definitely. Oh, that's interesting, man. Mm -hmm. Um. When you were when when I went to school in Baton Rouge, they had this was in when Master P and then were really had really set off, and uh -huh. you were probably still at the at University High. Yeah, school. I was at U High at the time, and uh, that's when Master P and his it was really they had really set it off. Then when they had Silk the Shocker, Sea um, Murder, and they used to come to the rec center. Yep, and they had guys, no joke, that would stand on the side of the court holding their clothes they were going to wear after the game yeah and they would bring guys um they brought a guy that played for the celtics i think named anthony something this was before your time there uh they but they would fly guys in and they they'd would play. have games with like all stars yep. every day at the rec center yep i was a young kid then yeah and me and garrett used to always go up there and try to play a pickup game and it would be Master P, Silk the Shocker, yeah. C Murder. You might have Mystical on the side. Yeah, yeah. You got you got I Mia did. X on the side. I'm just <laughs> like, what the? I'm like looking like it's the whole fucking no limit in here. Yeah, like you know, it used to be some like epic runs. You know, um, Stromal Swift would be in there, College Temple, all type of Jabari. Like it, it was yeah, crazy. Jabari was so fun to watch. Yeah, man. Jabari was great. Yeah, dang. Yeah, that's a, that was like my first experience uh, watching basketball when I got over to uh, Baton Rouge. Yeah. Was at the rec game, seeing those games, yeah. and then I would go watch. Um, you know, I'm trying to think who played. Yeah, that was when Stromile played when I was in college. Stromile, yeah. Um, who else played then? This was before Taurus you. Bright. Yeah, Taurus. Taurus Bright. Taurus oh man, Bright. Taurus was the nicest kid too. Yeah, man. he was. He had some big hands, like. Like like Kawhi Leonard, his hands were fucking huge. <laughs> were they? Oh my god! I'm talking about some. You know, we used to skip school and used to go over to their WCA, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, he would just like I'll be sleeping, he'd just slap his hand across my back. <laughs> really? Bah! Like wake up, <laughs> go to class. <laughs> Who's the? Uh, I, yeah, I remember when I was growing up, he was at Salmon. And our Chris Duhon was at Salmon. Chris Duhon, yeah. And Taurus was at Slot L. Yeah. And they would play each other, and they had to shut it. They had to shut the Epic, parish down. Epic yeah. matchups. Epic. Those dudes had to play. Yeah. Chris Duhon was great. Um, what do you think of watching? Do you still watch LSU hoops? Yeah. What about Tre uh, Tremont? Did you? Love, he was one Tremont of my waters. One of my favorite point guards I've ever seen play. Yeah, he was so little. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't realize how little he was, and just then seeing him play, he's like so fast, so fast. You know but what I mean? So good. I felt like, I feel like he, because he, all, I think he's run some with the Celtics. He plays in their D League team. Uh huh. Yep. The um, uh, Red Claw. Maine. Yeah. Yep. Up in Maine. Yep. He. You know. He. He's just a guy that I feel like. 
if would have went more in the tournament, went down the line, probably been a first round. Because oh. he's so good. He's clutch shots. I was looking at the the Maryland NCAA game. When yeah. He made the winning shot yeah, last yeah, yeah, year. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was just like, that was so, you know, it, the way he maneuvers and get in the lane. He's like, so, he's so crafty. He has angles that are just different than people yeah. while he's moving, you know? Yeah, yeah. I love watching him, man. I was so bummed that, uh, that I, I can't remember if he left earlier. He just, uh, he might have been a senior. Um, he left kind of early. I think he was a junior. I going loved to watching him. Yeah, yeah, he was so good, man. Um, but yeah, I follow him. I try and keep tabs with what's going on with him. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I'm a huge LSU uh, basketball fan still. Um, when you, I had a question about when you, when you guys were. Before, when I went to school there, they used to have this coach named Tyndall was his last name. And this is, I think, under Coach Brown. Who did you guys have? We had John Brady. Oh, this was under Coach Brady. So he had an assistant coach. Uh -huh. And I used to write play uh, papers for some of the players. Like they had uh, Brian Bashera, a couple Brian of other guys. Bashera. Yeah. <laughs> Brian Bashera. Brian yes. Bashera. Uh, Ron Ronald. Ronald Dupree. Uh, I don't know if it was Ronald Dupree or not. I loved watching Ronald Dupree. Oh, um, he was uh, great. Um, or um, Roland. Roland. Yes. Ro number Lamont 43. Roland. Lamont, Lamont Roland. Roland. Yes. Dude, I used to write his papers, and the, t the assistant coach would meet me in the museum on campus and give me tickets to the games and give me <laughs> autograph shit. Yo, Lamont looked like straight oh, convict <laughs> straight out of high school. What? He had an open face goal. I remember Lamont. Yeah, Lamont had goals in his face. mouth, walked bow-legged. Man, he looked like a straight convict coming straight yeah. to college. Like he was right out of the swamp, bro. <laughs> yeah. He looked like he was right out of the, like yes. he climbed out of the swamp. <laughs> yes. Hands first, man. Yeah, no question. That's crazy, bro. <laughs> That's hilarious. Who was the who's the most gangliest looking dude? If you're out there on the court, when you see this dude, you're like, "How am I even gonna play this guy?" Because his body doesn't make any sense, you know. Uh, who's just gumbied out there, just like man. to a level? You, uh, just I don't. I would have to say like, was there anybody just they had one arm that was just too long or something? Just somebody, you know. Like, I just I felt like even. LeBron was just too big, just so yeah. big, so fast, so smart. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, too much. It's like a cheat code. Yeah, like like when playing with the Celtics and playing Cleveland when they were kind of on the ups and you know fighting for that you know Eastern Conference championship. Like he was amazing. Like you know what I mean? And then it's like five other guys. Like I understand why he went to Miami. Right. Like you know what I mean? Like who does that? You you you're winning in Cleveland. You're getting there, but it's just not enough because the Celtics are fucking busting your ass. You go to Miami, you know what I mean? So it's just like. So it made sense to you when he went down there? It made sense because we were fucking tagging his ass. Yeah. Like he would leave the court like sick. Really salty. Like, you know what huh? I mean? Like salty. Damn. We had a team, you yeah. know what I mean? And then we understood what we had to do to beat him. And so he, he went and got more help. And that's yeah. what he did. Is it. Once you get into, because right when you got into the pros, you had you guys won the championship first year. Yeah, rookie Fucking year, crazy, straight bro. to the chip. It Damn. was, it was a crazy. Did you think it had anything to do with you or not? A little bit. Yeah, you know, what like I mean? not in a bad way, but in my head, I'd be like, oh, this shit is. All yeah, because you know? the rookie, we do all the rookie duties. Yeah, you know what I mean. We. You know, we make sure they got the peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. <laughs> we make sure that, you know what I'm saying, that they get their like rest. Cosby, <laughs> we got the peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. You know what I'm saying? Like, we make sure that everything is cool. They call us at four in the morning, you know, and practice too. You know, practice was my days. Like, you know, I would help a lot. You yeah. Know? And then I would play a little bit too. I played a little bit. So, was it uh, was it nerve? Did you get nervous when you first started playing in the NBA? Is there a nervous thing in it, or is it Man, still just a basketball game? It's it's a basketball game, but I think when you get to the NBA, it's a whole different level, and you can kind of see it. You know what I mean? Because I I'll never forget we were playing a <laughs> exhibition game, mm -hmm. and we were playing um, the Raptors, and they had Andron, they had Bar a kid camp Barnyarni, number one mm -hmm. pick. You know, Bang from, or yeah, 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 I remember for Italy, and we go over there, and it's our first game, and I see my jersey, you know, from Baton Rouge. Yeah, I fucking started crying like a baby. I'm like, oh, I made it from the bottom. <laughs> like, oh my god, KG's fucking looking at me like, all right, kid. Like, <laughs> you gotta tighten <laughs> so up. Man. I'm like, damn, man, we uh, can't put him into the third quarter, man. He gotta tighten. I was up. like, god damn, like. 
it was just uh, it was just you know we never seen nothing like this before like yeah. you know so I, I fucking cried like a baby just the surrealness of it all yeah think? man i made it like you know where we from it's, it's the slums it's <laughs> kind of crazy <laughs> yeah what, so. where did you grow up in baton rouge i grew up in the eaton park area Gus Young, mm -hmm. it's um kind of midtown, mm -hmm. so it's kind of like the last of the number streets. So like from First Street all the way to, you know, so from thirty fifth to forty ninth is my neighborhood. Mm. So tough, yeah, rough, real. Was crazy. it mostly black, white? We had a couple of sprinkles of whites and Mexicans in there, you know, but yeah. it, it was tough for him though. It was tough for oh, hood. Yeah. <laughs> There's always oh dude, we had this dude growing up and when I was growing up called Brian Purvis right uh -huh. and he uh, was the first white dude ever to hang out like he was the first wigger ever you know remember wigger said, yeah remember the term wigger you remember <laughs> yeah bro he was they'd never seen it at school before so the teachers didn't know what to do they'd never seen it you know yeah. they put him in l learning disabled classes thought he was bro. crazy yeah, yeah. <laughs> bro just because he wore a red skin starter hoodie pullover and fucking smoked uh marlboros at all the, day and smoked newports that's the only reason so they're like we this guy yeah he's crazy my man. grandmother smoked newports but he would always be he would be so we'd have to eat lunch with the special ed children uh -huh. so he would always be posting them he would just be dribbling invisible <laughs> basketballs just posting them up in the lunch line and shit like you had dudes that can't even see and he's fucking just just post it, just with an invisible ball, just fucking posting them up, man. Man, that's crazy. That's yeah, super Louisiana crazy. Louisiana was fun, though, wasn't it? It was, man. It, it, like, I remember just when we used to eat, it was like a fucking party. Yeah. Like, like oh, grandma cooking. Like, oh, shit. We got everybody in the neighborhood about to come down. Like, she about to sell plates. Like, it's cracking. Like, just the way we use food there is a form of entertainment. And yeah. I don't think nobody else really does that. Like, you know, a crawfish ball. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? We just, used to it's do this. a reason to get to, yeah, it's just, it's something about it create, they have food that creates environment for people to have fun. Yeah. Yeah, there's just something about it. Yeah, standing around crawfish, eating it, because you're still talking, your face is burning. Yeah. Little Larry, your granddaddy got that fucking big yellow <laughs> shit on his cheek. He don't know what's going on. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody's dancing, doing some type of zydeco or yeah. some shit. People wild. People playing shit that ain't even an instrument. Yeah. You know? Somebody fucking. Banging on the table yeah, or some yeah, shit. Somebody, yeah. <laughs> Dude, I do miss it, man. I'm, I just miss being young, I think, a lot of times. For real? I bet you were a fucking handful when you were young. Let me think about yeah, you were it. fucking just wild and just. I used to some. I somehow I wore like a lot of shirts, bro. I remember that. <laughs> I did, man. Because I was real small, so I put on five or six or seven <laughs> fucking shirts, bro. And go Gotta out fill there. it out, right? Yeah, dog. But then the problem was, I remember my pain. My legs was so little then because my body would get all big because of the shirts. Oh my know? goodness! And I'd be fucking just rolling up. <laughs> in Tigerland. What you oh, doing? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, now y'all talking Reggie. shit, boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Listening to Nelly, bro. <laughs> Telling people what's up. Yeah, man. that's what Tip Drill was out, right? Dude, Nelly was one of the. La <laughs> Nelly brought black and white people, made everybody feel like they could dance, I feel like. Oh, dead ass. For white people, it was of one time, I feel like, in my I'm lifetime. Going down, down, yeah, baby. Yeah, yeah. Yo, street in the. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, man, like, man. yeah, we can do it. <laughs> Dude, I really felt like that. Man. First CD I ever bought. First CD was Country Nelly? Grammar. Yeah. What? I was seventh grade, 12 years old. God, it was good, I, wasn't it? I would say Tip Drill first video I masturbated to. Oh, damn. <laughs> Have you ever seen Tip but Drill? But now we're talking about your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> like Tip Drill was like a porno. Uh, I don't know if I saw that. Let I need see. a Tip Drill. I need a Tip oh, Drill. Damn, no. If you see a Tip Drill porn on my... <laughs> really? Um, please pull that video up if you can. <laughs> Let's see what we got here, Nicholas. Damn. This came on BET Uncut. Do you remember that? Uh-uh. Uh, oh, was that it? That no. Is the, that one right that there. One, yeah, two pull. Uh-oh. Bone marrow. Who is that? <laughs> Some black dude's got the wildest nicknames, bro. You can't have bone marrow be a fucking <laughs> nickname, bro. This my boy liver transplant right here. You can't have that shit, man. It's the blue one. I, oh, is this it? Oh, damn. Oh, look at that. Ooh, see that? That's porn back in our day. That's like yeah, real yeah. porn. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. 
Nelly. Nelly. What? Them lunatic. That man took his mask off for that <laughs> ass right there. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen that man with his mask off. Like watching that video, Damn, young. Yeah. That was. That was oh like my God. Definitely like. I've never seen this one. You've never seen this no. one. Oh my goodness. This is like right before like. It's, it's, it did. Really? It was a serious video. Yeah, this is really heavy, man. Damn. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> this shit is intense, man. Yeah, it is. You call your Somebody. sponsor. I do need to call my sponsor. <laughs> just, this seems athletic. Some of these really, these bitches is athletic out there. Man, <laughs> talk about real track stuff. Whoa, whoa, boy. <laughs> that was close. Yeah, that was a close, <laughs> that dude. That was a close one. You might have to do a deodorant or something like <laughs> that, bro. Damn, bro. <laughs> Nelly, wow. Nelly's the guy. He got it started for sure, for sure. Um, so a, a lot of rap, a lot of rappers come through NBA too. So the, the, a lot of those guys invite y'all out to party, or is it just uh, kind of yes. their own things? Man, I've man, I got so many rapper friends. It it's gets crazy. Me. Yeah, yeah. Who who parties well, really? Oh my god, I would say Chris Breezy. Yeah, oh I could god. see that. I walked to one of his parties one time. I was like, "What the fuck? <laughs> Why are the lights off? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? I can't see nobody in here." He was like, "Yeah, you know, shit. I'm, you know, I'm trying to talk to everyone. Boy, he like, just, right. oh, he's trying to, like, I'm trying to holler at everybody. Like, <laughs> like, damn, Chris Breezy. Like, you got damn. Turn the lights on. I can't even see the holes here. He's like, we ain't paid the power bill, man. But it don't matter, man. You know, I just think that you know when you turn the lights off, you just." You know, you're being sneaky. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's sneak going there's on. Sneak man. going on. Like, yeah, you come over here, come and meet me in this room. Hey, yeah. you over here, come meet me over here in this room. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, they it's can't like a game of clue. Yeah, yeah. Like, goddamn. Like, Chris Breezy was definitely, he's definitely that guy. Yeah. <laughs> I could see that, man. I always, uh, and I know you and I messaged about this. I've always been a huge Boosie fan, and he's one of like the guys. You know, I'd love to be able to talk with him one day. Do you have you ever had any experiences with Boosie? That's my guy. Really, Boosie is my guy. Since he's the he's, hardest worker, bro. Yeah, he is, bro. And he he, he and it, I've been out to his house in Atlanta, big fucking mansion, fucking go karts, fucking volleyball, football court. You know, football. You know, feel like he's a sports fan, and he's just. <sighs> He he he's a legend in his in his world. You know what I mean? As far yeah. as just gangster music and just having that image. He's the last one, really, yeah. almost. Really, he he is for sure, for sure. And did you notice? So he was he was incarcerated whenever they had when he whenever social media came out. So he didn't wasn't even on it for like eight years. Yeah. yeah. So then, because sometimes I feel like his social media is so raw sometimes. Too raw. Yeah. Too raw. Oh, yeah. Like, Last ooh, week like, it got too raw. <laughs> yeah. It was really like, bizarre. Uh, 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 we need to send, send $25 to uh, <laughs> Spicy Watkins 71. <laughs> Send fifty dollars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love him. Man. I was like, "Woo, he's fearless." He's man. fearless. You know what? I, I I was like, "Bro, you need a reality show." Yeah, and he was like, "Yeah, you sure?" You know, I was like, "Yeah, man, like you're hilarious." And just the concept of him loving his kids. Oh, people it's don't so great. see that. Like people They're don't all understand so cute. that. Yeah, he he really loves his kids. And that, and I said, "You need to show the world a different light. You've been through a crazy path." Yeah, and now it's time to show people who you truly are and why people love you so much. You know, this man has a a boosie bash every year. Oh yeah, He's giving away free haircuts, giving away clothes. We do it at the park. We need seventy two barbers out here. <laughs> yeah. Bring your cousin. We need a uh, lunch meat. He does not. He's fearless. You we know, need this now. Let's do it. I love it. And yeah. I think he I, could be the mayor, man. I think he could. I think he could. He got a clean up some things but he'll be, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll be all right <laughs> i think yeah he did just come out with dangerous perfume put this on your lady you got that dangerous <laughs> like, you have too much shit man. go cop that dangerous perfume start it jackson uh it's always jackson somewhere jackson tennessee is going down <laughs> yeah, <bro. laughs> yes he does he does get into his promo well when does he i just but it Really though, he's the he is the hardest working person that I follow on social media. Like it never ends, ends, man. And, and he's trying to always figure out something. Yeah, you know the man got boosty chips. Yeah, he got boosty juice. Everything boosty, dude. My friend is in, is in a boosty neck brace, dude. Yeah, uh, boosty. It's a neck brace, and you press it on the 
aside and it's like we all got some wretched <laughs> it's unprecedented bro I'm like, how did that. you even get Boosie, that? I need that, Boosie. I it's need like, that. Dang, dang. And the neck brace will even, it's got a little thing, a motor in it. It'll, in case you, if you fucked up or hurt, it'll dance for you. It's like, we all got some ratchet in it. And his mother's a teacher. Yes. His mother's a teacher. Yes. She's still a teacher, I Man, think. Man, still a teacher and still, you know, in the neighborhood. People love, uh, yeah, my brother has, uh, I think, maybe done some yard work or something for them, but. Uh, but yeah, he always says the nicest things about her. Yeah, it's Connie. It's crazy, man. He's a such a legend, though. He is, you know, and he's a real gangster. Like, is he really? Like he's a real gangster. Wow. And that's the thing that people don't realize about Boosie. Like, Boosie got like thirty to forty motherfuckers around him all the time, and yeah. if you touch Boosie something's gonna happen to yeah. you <laughs> like, and that's how he rolls you know what i mean so like and you know that's amazing yeah like they love him you know from his neighborhood he's done so much good things and he's you know steady doing good things and so they people love, him, love man. him man yeah they do they really he's do. one of the last people i see on uh, social media that is really 100 percent real no matter if, if he's wrong or not to others whatever is his point of view that's what it is you yeah. know like he um what did he say a couple like a year ago he said some stuff on he's like man half this television making these children gay man y'all putting all this mm, shit on television yeah and sometimes it's kind of crazy but it's just it's exactly who he is yeah you know? it is it is you know you, you gotta love it you know in oh way. yeah this fins his comments on doing yeah he came out yeah i remember him telling man you can't put that man <laughs> you can't mine you can't Dwayne do that <laughs> you can't <laughs> Come on, man. He don't know yet, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, man. He don't know. He's 12 years old, man. <laughs> he, 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 he don't know where his next meal coming from, oh, man. <laughs> yeah, man. I love you, Boosie. I'm just joking, man. Uh, yeah. I love. I mean, literally, man, he's my favorite person to follow. He's just unprecedented. Yeah, he's, he's, he got his own style for sure, for sure. Um. When you look at like, so you look at your future, like what do you kind of uh, see for yourself? You know, obviously you guys are starting the podcast. You're such a big personality. Um, you know, I feel like people, so many people love you. What do you kind of see uh, in your future, you know? I definitely see myself in front of the TV. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or in a production phase because I love entertainment so much and I really feel like I can be on TV and be a host somewhere, but... Um, I did Shameless. Yeah, we had a question right here about it. This yeah. gentleman came up. And not this, look at this guy with that Carl Malone header on. Oh, you see him, huh? What up, Theo? What up, big baby? This is Ian in Salt Lake. I was just wondering, um, I know, Davis, you were in Shameless a while back, and KG just got into acting with Uncut Gems, but do you see yourself ever getting back into acting? Gang, gang. Gang, bro. <laughs> what you think, man? Hell yeah. Yeah? I think that's a... You know, I think that's definitely an area I can kind of conquer. You know, I've always seen myself the opposite version of The Rock. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you got The Rock and you got, and you got the baby. Role. <laughs> you yeah. got the role. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I've always seen myself. <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah, the opposite of The Rock. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I've always seen myself acting. And, you know, that Shameless interview, like, they called me up like, hey. You know, come in. It was my first interview. Like wow. my first, I just put my actor access out, just got me a firm to kind of, you know, start giving me auditions. And they were like, oh, we got this shameless role. And I'm like, okay, it's kind of dope. He's like, yeah, you're going to be in jail. You're going to be bodyguarding Ian. And, but it was like, but you're gay. <laughs> and I was like, oh, it's my okay. first role. I'm gay. Damn, so all right. I was rehearsing the role like I wasn't gay. And then my, my, my coach was like, I think you're gay. And so I'll never forget it. Like I literally put my shirt mm -hmm. before I went for my audition. It was like, you know, I put my shirt and I turned around. And I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, and they were like, oh, you got the part. Yeah. You, got, <laughs> you yeah. got the part. Yeah. Nobody's <laughs> came and done that. And you, you know, you got the part. And I was just like, damn. And All so right. it was like, wow, you got, you got a flavor. You understand, like, man, it's your first one. And so after that, I've just been getting all different types of, like, requests or auditions. And, 
I'm feeling like I got a, like a space, like, okay, cool. This is what I, what I can do. You know, it's what I want to do. Do you feel like you all, I mean, obviously you were, you, you're just a big man. There's nothing you could do about that. I mean, some of that's nature, you know, you might've had some, you know, you might've stepped in some magical water or something. Who knows what happened <laughs> if you did something, but also it could just, a lot of it's nature. Yeah. Do you feel, did you always feel like, like sports was like your, um, like I have a friend who uh, I was just with last week and he won the, he won a, uh, MVP in the World Series, right? He played for like 12 years. And I was talking to him and he said, you know, um, I, I was I was good at baseball, but mm-hmm. I never really, I never knew how much of a, pa- it was a passion it was for me. Mm-hmm. What was your relationship like that with, with hoops? Was that definitely like your passion and now it's kind of like... I, it was my passion, but I didn't know how good I was. Yeah. You know what I mean? I thought I was good. Like, okay, yeah, you're good in the neighborhood and, you know, middle school and... And I started playing AAU, and I think it was going into my junior year. And I'm like, it was the ABCD All-Star Camp. And I went out there. It was the All-Star. I made the All-Star game. I was like, damn. I'm, you know, and I'm looking at all these guys like, oh, Dwight Howard and Josh Smith and J.R. Smith and Sebastian Telf. These are all guys that are predicted to go out of high school. Wow. And so I'm like ranked 13 in the nation <clears throat> and stuff. And I'm like. Shit, can I go to the NBA? You know, and uh, and, and I was like, <laughs> I need to go if I can. <laughs> like, I never thought, you know, I me mean? because I thought I was gonna be running out of Tiger Stadium like football. Yeah, and so oh, wow, me, you know, being there and seeing all that, it made me like, hey, let's go get this money. And yeah. then now my focus, like, okay, I got a chance to make some money. You know, and where we from, and we got a chance to make some yeah, money. You got to get and make some money. Yeah, we gonna make it. You know what I mean? No matter what. So yeah, especially when you don't have anybody like really. Yeah, a lot of people get opportunities through their family and stuff like that. Like, that's one thing I never had really that much, you know? Yeah. Like, your dad gives you an opportunity, you know, or something like that, you yeah. know? Um, but did you love it? Did you love playing basketball? I I did. I do. I love it. I, yeah. You know, I, or, yeah, I, do you love it? I didn't have to wear a fucking helmet. Yeah. Like, I, I, I could wear my, hey, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, hey, I'm Glenn here. Here I am. Like, football guys, you don't know who the fuck. Who. <laughs> know, like, you don't know, like, yeah. I'm a left tackle. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, he don't score touchdowns. Like, yeah, you got to be yourself. Your personality got to be there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I wanted to. If I couldn't score touchdowns, I didn't want to play on the fucking line. Yeah. I'm, oh, yeah. And then we're going to put you there, too. Yeah, I want to be the guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, but then I realized, like, left tackles get paid damn near more than everybody on the field. They so need I was those like, guys. Oh, okay. When you look at this season with the um, with the virus and the way a lot of the guys, like, can't, can't, they couldn't keep the season moving. We got a question right here from this gentleman right here. And he's obviously incarcerated. <laughs> How do you feel about all the sports closing down? The Olympics just been postponed. I was excited to see my boy Mario McCoy in the Skateboarding Olympics for the first time. Just what are your thoughts on the world overreacting? Gang, gang, we out. Gang, gang. bro, get out safely, man. What I want to say is, yeah, on top of his question, like, with the with the guys now, they just canceled the season. Like, yeah, it's tough. Would that have been crazy? Like, if that was your senior year, that uh, the year you were coming, would you have? Out of freaking like went crazy wow because you think about it this is what i this is what i want to do with my life and now i have to be in my last year i need to find some a job yeah, <laughs> some yeah, money yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> right now it's like i can't go do what i was you know doing in school and you know going to play for like after i leave like yeah it's discouraging but you know hopefully you know this thing will die down and guys can get back to their regular normal selves and kids can fulfill their dreams of walking across the NBA stage and shaking Adam Silver's hand, you know. So hopefully, you know, I just know it's tough, but we understand what's going on here. Right. And, and you know, and that's bigger than any sports of just people well-being and being healthy and stuff like that. So, Did you think it was real at first? Like how real did you think the virus was? I didn't think it was real at first. I, 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 because I, when I was, because I watched the news and I was like, China, like, God damn, I hope that shit don't come over here. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? I hope and the Chinese the- are wild, dude. Let's be honest, dude. <laughs> Chinese are wild. Uh, Man, I was, I I'll was. I'll be over there. I'm not even joking. I'm on a train, bro. Some dude is eating fucking falcon feet on the train next to me. Not even joking. Out of a bag, man. 
just having a couple falcon feet, man. Just <laughs> yeah. I was One fr- of them, I think, crawled off a fucking running back of his neck, dude. I'm like, damn. <laughs> no, listen, um, but I'm serious. I'm not joking about that. Like I'm just sitting on a train, and a man had a little bag of falcon feet, and he's just having just eating a, it. A couple hawk nuggets, yeah. <laughs> And he's polishing them off, dude. Oh and it smells God. horrible. No, but nobody else even noticed. It's just just eating hawk feet. They eat wild stuff, you know, uh, wilder I, than Louisiana. Like things we wouldn't even eat there. They're like, nah, that's that's, that's a great. Pet. I seen uh, you know like, they having a Doberman fucking leg, you know, dude over there. <laughs> it's crazy. You know? Yeah, it, it's it's super crazy. I thought I loved food until I seen that. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> like, I'm like, I don't, I don't want that type of food. <laughs> like I, I, I can't take it. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, so. I'll take a uh. Yeah, I'll take those spicy garlic bats. <laughs> <laughs> or, the, or the rosemary rat heads. Like, like, what the hell? Well, you know, everybody got their own way. And hopefully, you know, this situation, they can stop that yeah. type of shit. You know, it's crazy. With the virus, how much of a scare? So I know um, your co-host here works in has worked in adult industry. How much yeah. of a work? Like, is the adult industry still popping? Or are people using, like, you know, what's going on with that? Well, it's 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 not really popping. As much, you know what I mean. My, you know, my co-host, she tells me all the time that a lot of people are affected, you know, in the adult industry from this situation. Yeah. You know, you think about all the young ladies that have jobs, all the young ladies that have, you know, I would say, you know, um, give me a word, tricks or escorting, escort. Oh yeah, <laughs> like we've had a know? woman on here who's a sex worker. We've had, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's like, a real job. It's a job for a lot of people. Yeah, so they don't get to touch bases with those people because of the virus. And um, you know, um, I've been uh, I've been noticing that the girl's been attached to OnlyFans page a lot. Oh yeah, because Riley's fa- OnlyFans page is. It's booming. Booming. I want you guys to go take a look at that. Damn. My co-host okay, fan yeah. page. You know, and, 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 yeah, and get a- you know, and she let me know about the other things that girls can do in that industry to make money. Yeah. Because of this virus. So it's hard on everybody right now, especially the, the hosts. Yeah. Yeah, these these a lot of these hoes are really struggling, I guess. You know, these legitimate yeah. hoes. It's legitimate. And I'm not talking about these illegitimate hoes, man. I'm not. I refuse to talk about them. <laughs> so I'm talking about these real hoes, man. You know, these down since day one. Oh, yeah, mm. the bottom. What, what, what do you call them? Bottom. Bobby. Bottom bitches. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. I'm talking about the foundation. <laughs> the fucking yeah. These real, real legit ones. Uh, Nick, we got another question that came in. Mm-hmm. you looking like a stud up there it's mm. a nice word you chose man that's, that's not the word i would have chose man but troubled fella uh, the, with. the tiger joe exotic <laughs> have you watched it yet oh my god all right we'll get right into that here's your boy right here another incarcerated fan big baby davis checking in from massachusetts okay what was it like to influence a culture and a generation of young sports fans in a city like Boston. Uh. Yeah, what is up with that, man? Because Boston, it's something else, bro. Yeah. You know, they're really wild, man. They're, it's the white Chinese, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so they really acting wild. Listen, there, you know, man. I would call Boston, like, especially Southeast, like, <laughs> black people. <laughs> like, because like, they are, like, they don't play no games. They whoop your really? ass. Like, it's no joke. Wow. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it was just magical. Because yeah. you go, you know, you get drafted and – you oh, you go, would, yeah. You go straight to the Celtics, who the most winningest team in the NBA history. You got all these banners and all Bill Russell and all this. So it was like, damn, like, wow, I really are, am a part of something like crazy. Yeah. And just to have my own niche. You know what I mean? Like, I, just to have my own niche, meaning that the fact that being big baby in a Celtic jersey. It, it was crazy. It's like oh, to yeah. this day, people are like, "Oh my god, big baby! Oh my god!" I feel like about to play for the damn Timberwolves or something. Like they wouldn't care. They wouldn't give. They wouldn't care. So it was just like, I didn't know how big, you know, the Celtic organization was when I really got there. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like to be a part of something like that and be a part of culture in that way and you know, have your own place in there and have a championship. It just means a lot. And, you know, I can always go back to Boston. Like, it's, you know, it's just, it's a great feeling because the fans, they really love sports. 
Like even the girls, like fuck, oh Tom Brady, I'll yeah. suck your dick. Yeah, like you know what I mean. Yeah. Like big baby, I'll lick your balls. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, I got you a picture of uh, big baby's autographed balls off the internet. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, Susan. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, like they they love they love their sports. You know, they do. Huh? They love their sports. It really definitely. is true, huh? It is like. Do we, looking back on uh, your NBA time, do you feel like you made the most of it? Uh, as an athlete and a competitor, no, because you know you want to win more than one championship. You want to make as much money as possible. You know, um, I had the best time while I was there, and you know my time got cut short because of injury, and. That's just it. I, I had a wonderful time. I love it. Like I, I have my place. Like you know what I mean. No matter yeah. where I go, somebody's be like, "Hey, that's Big Baby right there." Like, oh, you only guess I've been most excited about, man. <laughs> Seriously, no joke. I mean, yeah. Um, here we got a question right here from this guy who's been hunting. Oh, look at him. Theo, <laughs> Big Baby, big fan of you guys both. My name's Noah from Santa Rosa, California. Hey, quick question for Big Baby. Um, are you a fan of the new style where the, the young players are wearing the short shorts? Um, or do you like the more traditional kind of bag your look like when you played? Uh, let me know. Uh, I'm a, I'm really, I'm a, I, I don't care. Like, you know what I mean? I don't really? want them too short. Right? Yeah, you right? seem more I don't traditional, want, I'm man. like, you know what I mean? I don't want them too, too short. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I got big legs, big calves. Yeah would, you, yeah, would you feel comfortable letting people see all of that work? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know? yeah I, I don't mind. I don't mind. I don't, <laughs> yeah, so, I don't mind. It's okay. Right. You might have looked, man. I'm working with that, something. I'm working with something. The, oh, okay, now that's a lengthy short right there. <laughs> So yeah, well you now you cut off half that short. How are you gonna feel though? Would you yeah. still be able to shoot? Yeah, you know what? I, I would you pull them down a little bit before you shot? You know? <laughs> I try to sag them a little bit. You know what I mean? Because my my thighs rub together. Oh, so wow. I don't I don't, want, <laughs> I don't want to start a fire. And would you have to put something on your legs so they wouldn't? Uh, did you have to vaseline them or anything like that? Or no, no that's I just crazy. the tights. I would have them come down. A yeah, little that's bit, right. And they're smooth, and you know I wouldn't. You know, like I said, start a fire. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got to keep. Yeah, you got to keep it classy out there. Uh-huh. Um, so living in Vegas, man, that sounds intense, bro. Uh, you know, it's not that bad. <laughs> oh, no, I, it's not that bad. You know what I mean? People be like, "Oh, you stay in Vegas? Oh shit, every day is a fucking party for you." I'm like, "No, not really. I stay in Summerlin and stay with you know my next door neighbor is like 70. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have no young kids around me, like unless you go on the strip, right? Unless you go look and have a good time. Yeah, yeah. Like you know, other than that, I would, you know, you know, I feel like I meet prostitutes everywhere. Yeah, you know, because I think because there's a lot of them just living there. Yeah, too. so I feel like I'm meeting prostitutes all the time or a pimp. Really? Or, yeah. Now, have you ever had some run-ins with some crazy pimps? Yeah, I've had some wild stories with a pimp. I think one of one of my best friends had got a jail. He's in jail in jail for ten years mm-hmm. and. He's like, bro, when I get out, I'm coming to Cali. We're having a good time, you know, whatever. And so we go, we go to the st- <laughs> <laughs> we we he gets here, and I'm like, yo, what, what you want to do? He's like, you dude, I gotta get laid. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, that's the first yeah. thing I'm trying to do. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So we go to the strip club to kind of like fish. There are a little, you know, little shrimp net out see there. See who's out there. <laughs> you know, make it rain, see if we can grab a little yeah. shrimp. <laughs> take make them it home. Grip. Yeah. <laughs> Throw some dimes. Yeah. Oh, my God. Pass, I think, a quarter to some chick. Yeah. That's so not me. <laughs> we, yeah. we want to do laundry, baby. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> we we literally we Make finish rule over here. You know? We we do all that laundry coins. And okay. Like, hey, come back to the house. So we're driving, right? And so she's in the car. You know, they're in the back making out. You know, oh, I'm yeah. like, wow, he's getting busy. And we see this car following us, and we're like, yo, who the fuck is following us? So you know, now I'm like, Doo! <laughs> Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, so she's acting weird, and next thing you know, you know, we get to the house, and we see the same car. We're like, how the fuck does she know we're here? Yeah. And it's her pimp. No. She was like, you, he was like, you left the strip club? You weren't supposed to leave the strip club? What the fuck are you doing? Like, going fucking crazy. What did he look like? Did he look like a pimp? Did he have long hair? Definitely. He had two fucking braids. Ooh. 
Award. You would thought you would have thought he was on that uh, whoop that trick. What's oh, that? Uh, yeah. what's that? <laughs> I don't recognize. You don't know. Yeah, he, he, he was playing, definitely. Though. Yeah, yeah he was definitely <laughs> played on that movie. Like whoop that. when that beat kind of starts. <laughs> whoop that trick. Like, <laughs> yeah. Hit him with the fucking <laughs> with the fucking chorus. <laughs> I thought he d- played on the movie. Wow. And so you know he gets out. He's like, that's my hole. That's my bitch. I'm like, what? And what are y'all saying? We're like, hey, we we was just trying to have fun. We like, just met this. My bitch. man just got out of the jail. <laughs> like yeah, I was trying yeah. to explain to him. And so he's like, we, we we settled things. You know, we had to pay him some money and she had to go back to the strip club. Wow. But she was mad at her pimp though. Damn. She wanted Were to you have, scared for a second? For a second. But then I kind of like Baton Rouge mode crazy. Like, oh, all right. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Go Like outside of Whispers or something. Yeah. You know? <laughs> or one of the clubs. You know, sometimes they always have those clubs where people always get like some sometimes shot outside of. Yeah. But it's like, oh, Secrets over here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. You got to come over to Secrets in Avondale. You know? Or something, bro. <laughs> It's always like something real, like whispers, you know. Uh huh. So, oh yeah, you got to come over to uh, yeah. Uh, you barely heard this. Yeah, <laughs> it's always something. Yeah, so we got in trouble for stealing her from the strip clubs. So yeah, I got in trouble for you know, pimp got mad. So will you will you guys have any pimps on your on you guys' podcast, or what will it be like? You think a pimp would be really interesting because that's such a. I mean, it's really a. I feel like it's kind of a frowned upon job. But I feel like, you know, everybody needs like kind of a, a manager, you know, or a foreman. Yeah. You know, everybody's got to work for a foreman, you know. Yeah, you know. We used to have a guy I worked for we didn't like. We used to do, um, you know, cleaning out wishing wells and shit in our town because they had a lot of wishing wells in Covington. Get the yeah so you were coined up so i'd be down there bro i'd be down there getting you know sending shit up the rope baby you know all kind of things man mostly as people think it's wishes a lot of it they think it's not that much money you got a lot of people throwing furniture down there bullshit (laughs) a sword i found a sword once a sword yeah bloody sword well it was a regular sword but it had blood on it you know that's a murder weapon it could have been man man, but it was but yeah, man. But you you'll be down there fucking two days, come up with nine dollars. You know, that's, it's a real. That's tough. Like that's a, that's a cool hustle. And then you got to hand. You know, you got to give sixty percent of it to the captain. You know, <laughs> so you breaking him off. Next, you made two dollars a day, off man. The wish you will. And the bees too that are down there. People don't think about that. They got shit. bees down there. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> people, most people wish. Apparently, they wish for bees. Oh because my god. Because there's so many fucking bees in those things, man. I, yeah, I would think it's water and mud. Yeah, and, and it's just yeah. sitting there. They heat people throw everything a lot of people use it for recycling and shit people think it's recycle you know That's... i'm gonna put this shit in there man <laughs> nobody's coming to get that uh-uh. that ain't fucking recycling <laughs> you know uh, wishing well Lord. what else we got nick hey deep big baby what's going on uh my name's tommy g uh from lockport illinois just got a question for you big baby uh if you'd want to talk about it can you talk about the ncaa uh do you guys really have to go to class? The athletes, uh, big names, maybe getting paid off, people getting cars. Who knows? Let me know. Thanks, gang, gang. Yeah, how'd it go down there? Because I was getting, I was getting, I was getting paid to write papers for players. So I'm sure you guys did. You have it easy? Did you have to go to class? I I went to class right because there's rules. Yeah. Like right, you got to go to class to play. Like right. you know, but I skipped a lot of class. Yeah, because. I knew what I wanted to do. Right. I wanted to go to the NBA. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I like you know what I mean? Like Right, so the only class you really need is to be at practice. Yeah, and, and like, you know, the class to pass, you know, get your grades. Like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. you gotta get your grades and stuff like that. But like I was so focused on going to the NBA, like I didn't really worry about what I, you know, I just felt like, okay, I need to get some business classes, some account managing classes, but (laughs) this kinesiology over here, I don't want to fucking learn about. That's somebody else's job. Yeah, like that's not my job. I don't plan on doing that. So I changed my major to theater. And then, in, you know, Did you really? Yeah. So you took some theater classes? Yeah. Wow, that's awesome, yeah. man. Yeah, so uh, improv and stuff, all that stuff. And just learning the stage and just the history and stuff like that. But then, you know, basketball took over. Yeah. And it told me, hey, you can go to the draft now. You're going to get paid. I was out. So. Do you ever wish you had stayed longer or no? I, it's I risky. W- I, I wish I could have. Right. You know, but John Brady didn't fucking want me. So it was like, oh, the next guy coming in. Hey, get your ass out of here. So it was like. But you know we 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 got taken care of. 
Yeah. We got taken care of. Like LSU is not like a school where, you know, you walk around and you're broke. Right. <laughs> Like they gonna make sure, like, hey, you got food to eat, you got money in your pocket, you all right? Come, all right. So, they really took care of us, especially yeah. the the boosters out there. They really show love. Yeah, yeah. And I guess they have. It's part. I mean, you have to. There has to be some. It's deservedly so. Did you feel like you were taking care of extra, or do you just feel like no? This kind of makes sense. It kind of makes sense, but at the same time, I was kind of like locked because you gotta think about it. Like I'm from Baton Rouge, right? College Temple the third, you know, first African American. You know, he was kind of my mentor, right? Because his father, you said, was he the first player that black yeah. player that played for LSU? Yeah, and so and uh, his son, one of his sons, played with you, Gary. Yeah, right? and he's in the NBA right now. That's to this right, day. he's still in. That's right. Yeah, so um, you know, I I didn't have to, I didn't take a visit. <clears throat> like Roy Williams was like, I'm not fucking coming down there and <laughs> wasting my time with you. Right, they're, right. they're not letting you go. And I went to high school on campus, so it was like, yeah. If you go anywhere, we're going to kill you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the only place you're going is right across the street. Yes. <laughs> Literally right across the street. Your high school was, all, I mean, it's almost surrounded by campus, really. Uh, most definitely. As soon as you come on campus, you high. Yeah. You know? And it was, oh, my God, it was so hard. Really? It's a laboratory school. So it's like. What does that mean? I'm in, I don't know. I know it's like <laughs> hard, right? So I'm in. I'm in my senior year algebra two with eighth graders. Ugh. So imagine being this star basketball player. You got little Johnny over there. Oh my God, could I see you at the game? Let me help you with your. <laughs> <laughs> Sign my beaker. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it was. Like, these kids are so smart, and I just, I made it. That, that's all I, I made it. Yeah. You know, so that's wild, man. Yeah. Is it hard? Um, how much has partying like affected your life over the years? Because partying for me was kind of tough. Like I would get, you know, I, I like I got into drugs and alcohol for a while for uh -huh. were me, and it started to get a little bit out of hand. So I had to t I had to like shut it down. You know, have you ever have you had tough times? I know because I, I mean there's I, cool there's cool stories out there about you with weed and cool stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, I have some uh, <laughs> I have some crazy stories. Um, I'm a weed smoker. Yeah. You know what I mean? I've been smoking weed since like eighth grade. Yeah. You know what well, I mean? Well, now it's kind of, now I think there's new laws where it's okay, right? They can't. Yeah, there's certain laws where it's okay. I think they can't test the players anymore. I'm not sure. Nick, can you check that out? Well, it's, I, I think it's more like um, doing the, the, the virus series that guys won't get tested. So they don't have to worry about things. Yeah. But you're definitely going to get tested, you know. Could some players play high, you think, in the NBA? Oh, no question. Really? Matt Barnes played high every fucking game. Wow. He and Steven Jackson have a podcast. Oh, yeah. 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 Matt Barnes played. Like, I'll be scared to hang out with Matt sometimes. Like, Matt, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to burn one, and then I'm going to take a shower. I'm like, God damn. Like, wow. you get high every – it, but it, it didn't affect his play. Like, he would See, be out there competing. And it's he black three, or white. He's mixed. He's mixed. See, he, I think a 100% white guy couldn't do that, I don't think. At all. Yeah. You think? <laughs> Dude, I always, yeah, I think, I think, uh, I think, this is a generalization, but I think black guys and white guys get affected by weed differently. Like, I would see black guys that could smoke weed and do some amazing <laughs> shit, bro. I would see white guys that could smoke weed and not do anything at all, bro. Yeah. Like, be paralyzed, you uh -huh. know? And I, then you would have, I'd have friends that could smoke and play a whole game. It just blew my mind. Yeah, I think the last white guy to smoke weed during the game was Larry Bird. Yeah, or Jason Williams. Remember that guy, white oh chocolate? He might have smoked. He definitely got high. Yeah, he probably sure. did. <laughs> Sam Perkins, remember how high he looked? Remember him that played for the Sonics? Wow, he used to get high. Yeah, Rasheed Wallace, for sure. Oh, he looked for so sure. high, For dude. sure. I can't guys. even imagine. He might have been shooting weed into his arm. No bro. question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he might have had the suppositories, bro. He might have put two in his butt, you know? <laughs> I could see some of these guys being out there high. Oh, that's Matt Barnes right there? No, that's Damon Stoudemire. Him and Rashid, they were always getting in trouble. For oh, we, yeah. yeah. That's remarkable, man. And that's why I think there's just, yeah, like, I, I just don't see how some guys can do that, but that's the difference between me and a lot of different Yeah, I, I couldn't do it. Really? I could not do it. Did you ever get high in play? One game, Sacramento. And How'd I had a do? good game. You did? But it was just like. I didn't know what the fuck was going on. Everything was like, I was just staring. Like, one time I was at the free throw line, it was like, they gave me the ball, and I just was staring at the rim. Yeah. 
like literally just <laughs> staring at the rim. <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh, shit. <laughs> like, oh, shit. No, shoot it. Hurry up. Because <laughs> you got 10 <laughs> seconds to shoot it. I was literally standing up there for like a whole like nine seconds. <laughs> Shot the ball real quick. <laughs> I was fucking stoned. <laughs> Damn, bro. That's crazy. Were you scared? No. You know, that's I'm so... like, cool, like, Doc, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Doc Rivers yelling at me, like, oh, okay, Doc, like, I don't really care. Like, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> did uh, did Austin ever play with you? Did his son play with you guys? Yeah, no? he did. He did? Mm -hmm. did, they, did his son get a special treatment? Because I remember his son played with the Pelicans. How could you not, I guess? It, it, was, it was tough. You know what I mean? Because as an athlete, you know what I mean? You watch, I mean, as an athlete and you come in this game and there's really no handouts or no something given to you. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's Austin, a business it, when you get there. Yeah. Huh? You got to make your, you got to earn your keep and, and, and get, and get, wow. you know, make sure you get your, you know, on the totem pole. Damn, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, it was hard for Austin because his dad was the GM president and, you know, he just had a hard year in New Orleans and yeah. everybody was like, oh, he's not panning out. You know what I mean? Right. And then now you have your father say, hey, come over here, son. Let me show the world that you can play. Let me give you all this money and show the world. And But at the same time, he can play. Right. He just had to find his niche and find who he was. And I think he had to humble himself. Mm. He had to really humble himself because, you know, dookies, they just think they're. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like fucking. Okay. Yeah, I'm the guy. <laughs> you <laughs> a lot know, of Chris so, Humphreys in him. Yeah, so he he had to kind of figure that out. And I think after that, he's become a good, a, a, a solid player. Yeah, you know his, and 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 if my son was about to get kicked out the lead, and I'm the freaking oh, yeah. president. Hey, okay, son, come here. Come here. You know, matter quit. of fact, you gotta give me ten percent, twenty percent of that contract <laughs> I just gave you. God damn it. So, <laughs> But well, we're gonna have you over here. Yeah, we're gonna have you over here. And then he found this niche, and yeah. you know now he's sticking, and he's you know he's he's in the league for sure. Um, my last question I have for you, you know Zion Williams, uh, uh, Zion Williams has a big body type. Yeah, you know? he's got that body type. When you see him, do you relate to that body type at all? Do you? Kind of, sorta. I didn't jump as high, um, but the game is so fast now, right? And you see the injury that he just had. Yeah, yeah. Meniscus. Before he even started, yeah. Before he even started. So I think he has to understand how to play the game so he can play for a longer time. I think the way his game is, if he doesn't find another way. It's balls to the wall he plays. Yes. If he doesn't find another way to be successful, then he's not going to play a long time. Wow. Because he's so explosive and that leaves you, right? You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, totally. Right? Blake Griffin used to jump out the freaking gym. Yeah. You know and what I mean? Now he jumps as high as he needs to. Yes. And now, and did, but at the same time, he opened up the three-point range. Right. Blake Griffin wasn't a good three-point shooter when he came in the league. Now he's capable of knocking down, shooting 35, 36, 40% from the three-point line. Yeah. So he has to, Zion has to figure out his niche. How can he be successful and kind of use his energy in spurts because the game is so freaking fast and every time he's using the, 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 the you know what I mean it's pounding 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 so like I think you know him developing kind of like a back to the basket a slow down type of field right. game I think he'll play longer do you um do you think you played the 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 best way that you could have played, or you, going yeah, back? Yeah, I think I'm it? I think I'm the last of the fat boys, right? Damn. The Oliver Millers. Oh, remember the, him? The God, you know, Robert Tractor him. Trailers. Oh, yeah. I think I'm the last of those guys. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. if, right? Because Draymond Green was kind of one of those guys after me. But yeah, he was a little strong. He was not stronger, sorry, but he was he wasn't that fat though. Yeah, but he was kind of like chubby, fat. You know what I mean? And then he kind of took his game to another level when he. Yeah, became more. He leaner. shoots a little more. Yeah, yeah. You know, he he can sh he barely can shoot, but yeah. you know, but he's such a facilitator, defensively minded type of guy. He and fight. he fights. Yeah, he yeah. Shit. So like he he he's kind of those guys that made the transition into like okay, the game is up and down more. I'm a big heavy set guy. I gotta slim down. Yeah. So Zion gonna have to figure out his way, and he'll be all right. Is there was uh, was there ever like a lot of racist stuff in the league, or people are pretty chill in the NBA? Um, it depends. You you run into assholes, right? Guys that are you know that kind of don't see both sides of the world, right? You know what I mean? Um, you see them, but um, I try to stay away from them because yeah, 
you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying I'm to like, live in the love yeah, space, man. Yeah, yeah, because I'm quick to slap a motherfucker. Damn, real, bro. bro, I like that. <laughs> That'd be beautiful to see, man. Yeah, I'm slap. Big baby slap hut dog. I'd fucking, <laughs> I'd send some people over to that motherfucker. Slap you sleep. <laughs> oh, yeah, bro. <laughs> I would see that. Did you ever get uh, hit? What is the wildest thing? This is the last question I have that you ever got hit up to do. I'm sure a lot of people will be like, hey, come do this. Come do wrestling. You know what I'm saying? Come tickle my fucking cousin, you know, for 50000 you know, or whatever. Man, is there I, ever like a crazy thing you got invited to go do, and whether you did it or not? I had a opportunity. A guy wanted me to fuck his wife. Mm -hmm. Like literally like. The wife, white guy, white guy. I knew it, bro. He, <laughs> I knew it, dude. He, That's not a black sport. Like, he, okay, bro. I, Come I bang would, my wife is not a black. I swear sport. to God, her, really? The, Just a more hidden surprise. Like, oh my god, guy, the dark arts. Like literally, I'm, I'm literally. Wow. We're playing. I think I just hit the game winning shot mm -hmm. in Orlando. Pushed a kid. And we're in our Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're the fucking kid, bro. Get the fuck out yeah, of here, yeah, son. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. It's these entitled kids. What's that fucking kid doing yeah. on the court, bro? And they made you me know? apologize to him. Dude. I'm like, this is what you fucking pay for. Where is that kid now? <laughs> yeah, you paid to get pushed, dude. For an extra $2,000 seat, you get fucking jaw jacked, uh -huh. little daddy. Welcome to fucking Big Baby Slap Hut, son. <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. These kids are getting out of hand, you know. Bro, it's so wild now these it's days. Crazy. Kids have all the rights. Kids are suing people on an app. <laughs> like what the fuck? Kids are like leaving home at 15. Yeah, seven. <laughs> I saw some dude the other day. A nine-year-old just got a fucking studio apartment near me. I'm that, like, damn, this shit. These crazy. people are wilding, bro. Man. He can't even use his stove. They had to unplug his stove. That's crazy. Yeah, I'm like, what the fuck, man. Good ass whoopers. I believe in those. So what happened? What'd you say to the guy? I was just like, I'm sorry for pushing you and you know, no harm. I don't know foul. the husband. Huh? The husband. I don't care about the kid. Oh. <laughs> Did you go get the money or not, man? <laughs> no. You didn't? Oh well, I that situation, she I'm in Orlando after the game and I see this woman, you know what I mean? And I'm just like, she's like, go oh, take a picture, da, da, da. I get back to the bus, as soon as I got, it wasn't even like five minutes. Wow. DM, hey, me and my husband, you know, my husband, I wanna fuck you, and my husband wants to watch, and like, we'll pay you $5,000. And how close did he wanna sit? Did they say or anything? No. But, you know, I wasn't going to let him sit close. He's going to have to okay. watch kind of far. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, how close you going to be? If you, you know what I'm saying, bro? Yeah, like, close enough to cook a marshmallow on my back? You nah, know what I'm nah, saying? Like, can't. how close are we going to be? You know be? what? Depending on how much you're paying, you know what I mean? Go that's ahead. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you can't yeah, touch, yeah. but you can get this extra good seat right here. <laughs> it's a $10,000 seat. Yeah. It's a, it's a $25,000 seat. Right? Yeah, the chair across the room, that's a $2,000 seat. The chair right here is a $12,000 seat. Yeah, for sure. Um, did you honor the commitment or no? Yes, I did it. Yeah, yeah. And was it? Were you scared or not? No, you know, I just do what I do. You know, whip it out. Yeah, just get ready. You know what I mean? She was already ready. So oh, she it was, was. It wasn't like, oh, okay. She was. You could tell she was. You know, wet and juicy and okay, fired just, up. Yeah, you could just see like, okay, she's ready. Okay. And then I'm looking at him. I'm just. Kind of like. Did you wait for a signal or anything? I'm like looking like over there, like and trying to stay focused here and trying to see what the fuck he's doing. You know what I mean? Right. See if he's doing what, like videotaping or videotaping or what? Well, that was in the rule. You can't videotape or anything okay, like that. That's fair. Or just like you know, you You're know, touching look, like, himself. Yeah. Like, yeah. hey, don't be beating your meat while I'm getting off right here. I don't. Yeah. Know. That's crazy. That's insane. But yeah. that's the craziest thing I ever did. And that's called. That's pretty wild. That's pretty. That's that's an adventure though. I feel like that's an adventure. A lot of people, I feel like, kind of dabble in that sort of world. You know, we had somebody one time email offered us ten grand to go make love to his wife somewhere. I was trying to broker that shit, get a little commission. Yeah, that's so word. Gotta respect Nick, man. He's a hell of he's a good producer, dude. That's crazy. <laughs> and um, but yeah, it's the kind of stuff that happens. But yeah, how, and so how close did the guy sit? He had the he had the five thousand dollars seat. Okay, there you go. Okay. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> he had the five thousand dollars seat. Right on. 
Well, this feels like a million dollar seat to me, man. I appreciate. It. Thanks so much for coming in, man. Oh, it's so for, cool, bro. Man, I was waiting. I've been so a big long. fan of yours for so long, I, man. I was waiting for so long for this. Fucking big baby. Yeah, dog. we was watching the wing show while you was eating the wings and shit. Oh yeah, <laughs> those wings are really. Some of them are really <laughs> intense, and some of them are easy. Dude, being from Louisiana, those bitches are. Easy, yeah, bro. we yeah we watched that, and I was just like, I gotta get, I gotta get with this guy, you know, and see, you know, we from Louisiana, I know, so we gotta man. stick together, man. So. We do. Thank you for having me, though. Yeah, thank you guys. I want and I want to off to come on the pod whenever I'm out there in Vegas and check it out. Man, you got to and man. See what's going on. And where can people? When can people find the uh, the podcast? Um, the podcast is about to go up. Mm -hmm. You know, we have uh, Instagram, the Rabbit and the Bear. Okay. We, you know, we have websites and stuff like that. We're just trying to get it out there now. So like. You know, I appreciate you for showing us some love, man. No, man, I appreciate you coming in. It's nice to it's nice to just kind of go through some of those times when, yeah, because I was such a fan of I, my favorite sport in the whole world is LSU basketball, and because uh, my dad was real old. My dad was seventy when I was born. He was an old man, and so uh -huh. he and Dale Brown were friends when he was when they were young. Wow! And so um, we grew up big fans. I, I just I've always been such a fan, dude. So. Yeah, thank you for entertaining us so much, for man. Sure, a man. lot of fun. Jabari, that dude is hilarious. I know, bro. man. I grew up on those guys, man. Two thousand, for so sure, fun. for sure. Um, Glenn Davis, thanks for being here, man. Thanks for having me. Yep, the me, rabbit man. and the bear. Which one are you? I'm the bear. Okay. <laughs> okay. Cool. <bro. laughs> After that last story, I don't know if you maybe he was the rabbit. Nah, bro. I ain't the rabbit. <laughs> okay. You know, she got a lot of ass, so you know that's bear like. You know what I mean? <laughs> Titties bear like too. Oh, yeah, bro. So some bears have good tits on them, man. They don't. <laughs> some of these nature channels, they're not really showing everything, bro. Uh, uh, Thanks for being here, man. Thanks, big dog. Now I'm just floating on the breeze, and I feel I'm falling like these leaves. I must be cornerstone. Oh, but when I reach that ground, I'll share this peace of mind I found. I can feel it. In my bones But it's gonna take A little time For me to set that parking brake And let myself all wild Shine